Hello everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello. Uh, okay. <laughs> that sounded very weird. And awesome Brony Reviewer Silver Quill. I'm not angry. Do I look angry? I ask well, as you say over a podcast. <laughs> Being a hypocrite, I always say that the, 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 the Griffon part of you is always angry. <laughs> That's speciesist. <laughs> ah, come on, admit it. You, uh, eagles always look like they have a curse on someone. <laughs> That's right, because they're American. Right. Well, okay, okay, fair enough. America is angry with the, the rest of the world anyways. <laughs> This already starts really good. And in today's episode review, we're going to be talking about episode 5 of season 5, Thanks for the Memories, written by Cindy Morrow, with the story editing by M.A. Larson, and storyboard by Jason Horichun and Carrie Momburkett. Wow, I can't believe I managed to pull off that name with only three hours of sleep. The synopsis of this episode is Ponyville is preparing to bring winter back, and Rainbow Dash is looking forward to a winter uh, with her pet Tank. But what happens is that Tank has to hibernate during winter. And when Rainbow Dash learns about this, she decides to make winter not happen at all. What follows is... Well, we'll we're going to talk about it in a minute. So, guys, what would you say about this one episode in particular? It depends on how you approach it. Because one of the big things that comes out of this is that a lot of f fans, including myself, love it for how it presents the five stages of grief and basically get uh, manages to talk about the concept of dealing with death, but without setting up those pesky soccer moms. <laughs> However, there are also fans who say, can we just enjoy the absurdity? Do we have to assign this very heavy meaning? Which, okay, I'm, I'm, being, I'm trying to put that as eloquently as possible. Usually they're just saying, God, you're overthinking it. <laughs> and, and I'm saying th there's no finer way to show you're an idiot than if you say oh you're overthinking it because that's not an argument that's not a, a discussion it's not even a good point it's just a dismissal it's usually people that don't even bother to try to find the, um, the subversive meaning of many other movies TV shows for either children or, or grown ups that are right there in front of your face I will agree with you, Silver, with what you say. It's an allegory about having to deal with the death of a pet. That this show will not be able to show us that. This is the closer we're going to get to that. I'm not even sure it's just a pet. I think you could apply a lot of this to a loved one. Well, well, yeah. of, of, no, no, you're absolutely right. It is. It, you can totally apply it to like when you have to put up with someone dying or someone having to go. Or you're not going to see that person forever. So... It does show the process very well, yeah. Well, yeah. I will say, I will say that I make it sound like you can't love a pet. I, my family has had several dogs who I just loved as part of our family was heartbroken when they died. So, oh, God. Believe, believe me, I know, I know where folks is coming from. I, I know exactly what you, uh, what you mean because my family has also had pets. We had dogs and cats and actually early this year, uh, on my birthday of all days, oh. we had to put down one of our cats, oh. and it was a it was difficult to go through. I, I'm still kind of going through it, and I, I I was totally feeling that for for Dash. That's very much what you go through, especially when it's something that you cannot stop from happening. Because our cat was healthy, our cat was all right. The problem was that he went uh, psychotic, so. It's something that we have to do, or else he'd put in danger every, everyone, everyone else in the house, like biting and, and, and hissing and all that. You cannot take care of an animal any other way like that than that. I'm rambling, and we are trampling over Norman. Well, no, I'm, I'm just sitting here listening in. <laughs> oh, good. Remain silent. We are going to keep talking. <laughs> no, come on, man. G give your opinion. Uh, I don't know, I mean, this, like, hearing what you guys said about the five stages of grief, you know, I, I can see it, I, I can see it, like, you don't need to overthink it to notice it. There's that word! Ah! <laughs> it's not, you don't really, you don't really have to overthink it, it's very much there, I mean, yeah. if it's not, it's, it's like when people were like, were like, 
oh, people don't like District 9 because they don't get... It's a metaphor about upper hate. It's very clear that it's a metaphor about upper hate. Come on. The, uh, the same way that this is, this is an allegory about dealing with the death of a, of a loved one mm-hmm. and uh, how you, you are coping with the situation. Yep, true, true. And the thing I like about this episode is, well, there's a lot, but uh, how do I put this? Looking at the whole show or the whole episode for this one, it goes through everything seamlessly. And, well, some people say you don't overthink it, but it's there if you do a bit of thinking. And you can see everything goes smoothly from denial, anger, to bargaining, to what was it again? Um, uh, depression, yeah, right? De- yeah, depression and then acceptance. So it's all there because if you take that in mind with what I just said and look at the episode, it's all there. You can very much, we can very much uh, um, um, divide the review of this episode in like the five stages of grief. Yeah, but that would take us a long time to finish. Well, not really, not really because we can go through it no problem. Um, like, well, well we, see, we see Rainbow Dash at the beginning of the episode. She's preparing uh preparing for winter to come and we see the the running of the leaves happen mm-hmm. and yeah that does bring up uh something that the fandom was trying to figure out is like did the running of the leaves happen before winter or after because if you remember in season 1 winter wrap up happened uh before fall weather friends so people were like do the seasons go the other way around in equestria no just they got the episodes out of order <laughs> Not even that. Twilight just spent there longer than a year. I always thought there was going to uh, there was a subversive, um, uh, out of order storyline uh, or like continuity in season one, and that you were supposed to put it in order on, on your own. Actually, for the longest, I had a playlist of episodes on season one organized as they were supposed to happen, <laughs> and the last episode was always. Uh, the Cutie Mark Chronicles, because to me that feels more like a season finale than the Grand Galloping Gala. <laughs> well, I I will maintain that it's been only one year since Twilight came to Ponyville. <laughs> now we're at the start of the second year. This is why she has so many uh, stress attacks. It's because if all this stuff happened in a year, you'd be flipping out too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a... Uh, uh, well, we, are, we, we always say about a year like uh, our usual 12 months. I think that the, the years in the question might be longer. So maybe it's like 24 months or something like that. I don't know. Something that kind of justifies the fact that we only had one of each. So, and a couple of episodes later, we're going to be seeing the Grand Galloping Gala again. Really? So, oh, wow. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Episode, episode 9 is going to be about the Grand Galloping Gala from what I remember uh, seeing the synopsis. I think. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> Talking about spoilers... It starts here and now. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, oh, and another thing that I, I forgot to mention. Cloudstale is mobile. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 I forgot about that. And not really forgot, but I was intrigued by the idea that Cloudstale is mobile. Because if we remember um, Hurricane Fluttershy, when they needed to send water to Cloudsdale, I always thought that, oh, Cloudsdale's near to Ponyville. Okay. I can accept that, but no, Cloud Deals moves like the helicarrier. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> okay, then. But, no, but it's kind of interesting. Like, oh, it's a, um, it's a, a nomad city. Nice. If you, if you really think about it, right? If you really think about it, it has to be because it has to create weather for all of Equestra from Appaloosa to, um, What's that country? Um, uh, Bab- yeah, it moves. Yeah, it moves. Yeah. It moves all over. But Manhattan, I wasn't whatever. expecting it to 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 spread. It. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. But well, as Rainbow Dash is dealing with all of this, uh, Tank seems to be kind of out of it. So she takes her to. Uh, she takes. I always call Tank a girl when he's obviously a guy. Mm. Oh my god! Uh, and uh, uh, Dash takes Tank to Fluttershy, who is like, "Oh, he's okay. He just has to hibernate." And this is where uh, Rainbow Dash learns the concept of hibernation, and she's like, she doesn't want to accept that. And here we go with the denial part. Is that, in fact, in the in the um, MLP Wiki page, it's divided, and the first one is denial, <laughs> uh, 
as she's like, oh no, that image in the book is wrong. That your your book is wrong. Maybe I should go tell for a uh, second opinion. And who else is going to give a second opinion? I was expecting. The uh, p- no, I was actually expecting Pinkie Pie. Really? I was compar- yeah, com- I was expecting Pinkie Pie and comparing uh, Tank to Gummy. Mm. I didn't see Spike coming actually. <laughs> well, Spike is a reptile. He's a reptile with his own room. <laughs> Yay! But I don't see the bed. Yeah, there is. No, I, I, is there? Because I don't see it. It's there. there. Yeah. yeah. Looks but like a spi- basket. I I mean, which uh, well, baby steps growing up, I guess. But finally, Spike has a room of his very own where he may hang out and have his comic book collections and you know. Do things with that rarity doll that no hey, one should talk hey, about. Hey. <laughs> Which one? The one that is just a plushie or the one with the hole in it? Uh. <laughs> uh, well. It's oh, a root beer cooler, everyone. Calm down. <laughs> it's just it's just sort of funny. Everyone was making such a big deal. Oh, Spike had a rarity doll in uh, in Castle Sweet Castle. I was like, yeah, he's got a rarity shirt and a fan, and why shouldn't he have a doll? Mm-hmm. Uh, he buys I, from the Hasbro store. He has rarity everything. I'm pretty sure he has the rarity playset <laughs> and the rarity car cart with the carousel <laughs> boutique and all that. Uh, yep, yep. And meanwhile, in the Friends Forever line, Sweetie Belle sleeps with a Spike doll. <gasps> so, oh no! So <laughs> shipping wars abound based on plushies. Try love triangle, love triangle. Uh I sure hope not. Uh the Dash is. Uh, she's not accepting the fact that. Uh, tank is falling asleep everywhere he goes, and this this arises when uh, trying to move some clouds away. Uh, the main six crash onto her, and Pinkie Pie is like, "Oh, look at you, cute Tank! You're burning yourself to get into hibernation." And Dash is like, "Don't say that word." Which one? <laughs> and <laughs> and this, I really like this change actually, if only because of all the different faces that we get out of Dash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She she oh. goes she goes the whole gamut of expressions. <laughs> yep, it can be quite terrifying. <laughs> I I have to I have to say one thing is that after watching this episode, I um I went to a couple of friends of mine who were very hostile towards uh towards this episode in particular, mm. uh, claiming it uh, claiming that it was unoriginal, it was boring, and it was uh, unimaginative. And one of the reasons to claim it was unimaginative was that. This angry Rainbow Dash face where she's like uh, giving all of them the death glare, the, <laughs> the glare that will shoot lasers. They said that that face is based on a meme. Is that based on a meme, guys? Because I don't remember a face ever looking like that. Same here. They, they may be saying why, the why you no make. Probably. Yeah, let's, let's see if I can find the image. Well, well, Silver's looking for it. I need to point out something. Like, in the section where the main four are cleaning up the leaves, you can see uh, some hats. And looks like they were inspired by Soft Park. <laughs> that is right, because the hats in those bags are, are based on the hats of, um, of the characters from South Park. In fact, uh, Fladrosa is putting uh, Kyle's hat on a beaver. <laughs> That's Kyle McCormick's... Uh, no, Kyle... Uh, what's Rock the Brofloski, thank you. It's Kenny McCormick, Kyle Brofloski, yeah. Stan Marsh and uh, Eric Carman, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't see Kenny's there. hat. Maybe, maybe he died. <laughs> you don't see the hoodie. You don't see the hoodie. You don't see. You don't see Kenny's hoodie. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's still alive, wearing it. <laughs> but that Rainbow Dash angry face, I love it. Like looking at it while just just watching it and. She's saying, uh, I'm not angry. Do I look angry? It's even funny and animated. Because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, James, remember what that guy said? No, the animation looks stiff and stilted. No. Oh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's alive or anything. It's almost like it's a cartoon. Oh, my God. It's sure to God. Mm. Sometimes I wish I could reach through the TV screen and slap some people. Indeed. It's it gets to the point where words don't don't do the thing anymore. Hmm. True, true. And Silver has linked us. Oh, this one. Maybe. Probably. 
it kind of, sort of, because of the, 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 the way that the eyes look, but the way that her mouth is, it definitely doesn't, I was looking at that and I'm like, ha ha ha, funny facial expression, and all of these guys are like, yeah, it's based on a meme, it's an original, and I'm like, you, 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 you don't know your meme. Do know your really meme. To... <laughs> but do we really need to care? Personally, no, because we have a song to sing. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, we're getting our little little John in. Yeah. 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 And with, uh, I have to say, this song sounds awesome. I love the lyrics, love the way that is uh, that is played, love the instrumentals, but the 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 visuals don't go with it at all. Hmm. Like, oh, 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 hang on a minute. I am totally skipping two things. Like, mm. talking about facial expressions, we have a Grinchy, Grinch <laughs> Rainbow Dash. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you're a mean one. Rainbow Dash. Dash. That, you okay, I, oh, I will give that. You. I will give that to all, uh, to all fans of Dr. Seuss that say, oh, that is a Grinch face. Yes, that yes, is totally it a is. Face. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, change winter for Christmas. I will stop Christmas from coming. <laughs> And then the next joke I Fo- love. Followed, followed by uh, Nabot and Costello, who's on first <laughs> joke. And here oh. we go again with the, the problem with pony names and current uh, normal uh, normal life expressions. There's clear skies everywhere. <laughs> no, I'm here. <laughs> no, but where is the cloudy skies? It's there over there. <laughs> uh, no, no, do it right, do it right. So where, so where does this go? Over by clear skies. But there's clear skies everywhere. Yo, clear skies here. But there's clear skies over there too. That's open skies. There's open skies everywhere. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, gonna... I'm right here. So you're open skies and you're clear skies. Then what's all that? Open clear skies. Then where are our fluffy color clouds go? Fluffy clouds? He's over there. <laughs> Uh, wow. <laughs> when I saw this, like, I, I think I watched the Nostalgia Critics top 11 best, uh, Animaniacs scene or episode or, um, scenes, I think. And. Oh. Who's on stage? Who? Yeah. No, but what band? Who? No, but, <laughs> I know, but <laughs> it's, I have to admit, it's a step forward, uh, from the, um, the Owl issues constant who jokes in mm. season one. But, but it's like this one, it's like the naming uh, mechanics of how Pony works. Like, mm, you, you have Rarity, you have Fluttershy, you have Rainbow Dash, then you got Clear Skies and Fluffy Clouds. Mm. Well, we had uh, Namby Pamby at one time. Oh, uh, yeah? Hoity Toity? Oh, uh, Hoity Toity. I actually didn't know that Hoity Toity was a, current, a normal expression until I got into the Brony fandom. <laughs> I actually well, thought it was a, a, a good old name. Well, uh, I wouldn't know if it was a normal expression, wink wink, but... Mm-hmm. It's an old one. When referring to something that is high and uh, for a high society. I didn't, I didn't make the connection. Uh, but yeah, now, okay, I actually have a slight bit, bit of criticism towards the, the, the joke there because it's, it's very well written. Really liked it. I absolutely adore this moment. It's it's like that reference to uh, I Love Lucy that Amy Kitty and Rogers put in the last roundup. It was a lot of fun. But what connection does it have with the episode? Which one? None. The, 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 the who's on first routine oh. that the, 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 the uh, three Pegasi have. It has no connection to the story whatsoever. The the only reason why they are there is because Rainbow Dash is moving the clouds in the background while they are just having a conversation. It's kind of like, yeah, okay, good, guys, it's funny. You put it there. That's awesome. It's hilarious. But aren't we following Rainbow Dash? Yeah, well, but you, you have to remember also in the last roundup, um, the cherry scene, how did it end? It? With, re- with Applejack covered in cherry juice. Yeah, and... Does it progress anything besides? Yeah, them it actually. That... Well, it well to be perfectly honest, that episode doesn't progress anything until the last two minutes because yeah. Applejack has spent the entire episode saying no, no, no. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to confess. Just leave me alone. Yeah, um, what if this one. Well, I, I can't say that uh, Applejack and the cherry thing does progress one thing. What? Oh, 
Really, Silver? Uh, why? Can you, uh, can, can, be, can you because I can. <laughs> because I can. Uh, because because your pain is nectar to me. Feed me your rage. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not raging. I'm bargaining now. <laughs> but uh, but no, it's, that is, that will be my only slight bit of criticism towards the, the the routine. It's hilarious. It absolutely is. But it, I don't see how it connects to the plot whatsoever. Well, it for me, from my point of view, it it, it gets them busy from noticing that Rainbow Dash is clearing the skies. There's also the element of this is not really intended to be pure story. Basically, it's still meant to be a fun, entertaining show, and if they throw in a little random bit that's just sort of, for fun, it gets you giggling, it doesn't derail anything. It's just a little bit of humor, and given that a lot of people are probably saying, wow, this kind of reminds me of how I felt when Grandma was was passing away, or <laughs> or when we lost our dog, yeah, maybe it's maybe you need a little levity in the middle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. No, I, I, I'm not saying please remove this. I'm just bringing that up. But I completely understand the purpose of the scene is that you need to put some relief on there. It's it's like it, it's it's what what people like to call the num- uh, Josh Whedon rule number one. Uh, that is that you can make it horrible, dramatic, and awful, but for the love of God, tell a joke at the end. So you you need to have like you said you have you need to have levity on there. So yeah, no, I I completely understand the purpose of the joke. It's just that it makes me scratch my head, going hmm, kind of out of nowhere. Funny though, very funny. Speaking of Josh Whedon, did you know that in the Avengers too? Ah, <laughs> don't ship it! Did he just say don't don't ship it? I I I guess so. Yeah, no ships. Hulk. Ex Black Widow, never mind. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, song, singing, we derail this long enough. Indeed. Uh, like, but like I was saying, it's a really good song, very cool, really rocky. I like, I want to have every single remix of this, but it's kind of hard for me to get into it when Rainbow Dash is carrying Tank around like he just passed away. <laughs> Because he's asleep, he has his tongue out, and he looks like, oh my god, Dad, you're playing with the ragdoll of Tank at this point. Poor uh, guy. Also, uh, was... also, literal duck face. <laughs> yes, literal duck face. And Kanye West glasses, by the way. What? Oh god. <laughs> well, they, they are, those, those glasses. Like This is the second time that Kanye West has sneaked into our <laughs> reviews. How did he do it? Uh, I don't yes. know. A man will do anything for celebrity. He he works less than Santa Claus. What the hell? <laughs> uh, oh well. This song actually it does get the point through that Dash's attempts to uh, stop the win- winter from coming is uh, uh, they are all futile because she's just one she's just one pony trying to stop several dozens of uh, of ponies from uh, making winter to happen. I will say with this song. Uh, in Castle of Sweet Castle, when they started the song there, and Dash piped up a tune, I just sort I winced. It was like, oh, oh, whoa, we started off a little sour there. This one was a lot more, I don't know if she did a better warm up or, uh, something, but it just sounded a lot better to me. Probably it could be natural for her because the tune was really rocking and stuff. Maybe, I'm not sure. Mm. It that it did sound more in tune. I agree with you because and yeah, same thing. Whenever I watch Castle Sweet Castle and Rainbow Dash starts singing, I go this squeaky dash, the screeching screeching glass. You guys have to remember in uh, Thanks for the Memories, Rainbow Dash is singing or uh, Ashley Ball is singing for herself. So this is only a one girl show, but in Castle Sweet Castle. Um, there were multiple peoples, and you have to account for tone of or pitch for other singers there too. I don't know if she accounted all that well in that case. Mm. At least in the, in the opening thing, it got better as it went along. But, but enough about the past. Let's talk about the past. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> enough about the past. Let's talk about the closer past. Um, but yeah, as she's is failing every single attempt that she tries to um. 
uh, to stop winter from coming, including giant magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? When I was a little kid, I I think watching Toy Story was one of the worst ideas ever <laughs> because I immediately took my magnifying glass to every single one of my toys. Yeah, I was that kind of per I was that kind of person, and. I can imagine kids trying to do the exact same thing with this magnifying glass moment. Oh, On their please. pet turtles, tortoises. Well, tortoise side. Yes, just just think about oh, it. I'd rather not. It's a terrifying concept. <laughs> wow, we suddenly go grim. Thank you, James. Well, what can you do? James, <laughs> let's you go sick. like <laughs> you sick fiend. <laughs> Let's yes. go like like Shredder. We're gonna have turtle soup tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was a tortoise. Uh whatever. <laughs> but y yeah, despite all her attempts, she just uh, fails at stopping Winter from coming. So she's like, if I cannot stop it here, I'm gonna stop it at the source. So they go to Cloud's tail, uh, all the while keeping in uh, keeping the uh, keeping Tank in check. And they sneak into the weather processing facility. And I have to say, I remember when, uh, before season five premiered that they released a bunch of, uh, concept artwork and work in progress and uh, different designs for ponies and, and, and all that. And I remember that background from one of the designs that they released for it. And I love it. I am looking at the inside of this weather facility and I'm like, I can see the, madness of all the tubes and machinery and all that, but I can also see how each one of them works and what each one of them do. And like I can't lose myself into the details in here. They are so neat. You can even see the frost building on top of the machines and uh, around the pipes. It's just so detailed. It's beautiful. There you go. But you do know that the water they're using for these uh, snowflakes is the water from Hurricane Fluttershy, yeah? Yeah, of I course. Would it's, it's, so. it's been one year, Tank and Rainbow's first, uh, winter together. So mm -hmm. before, to make the, the snow for that winter, Ponyville provided. So way to go, Rainbow. You are undoing the hard work that, that Fluttershy strove to not only conquer physically, but emotionally. Wait, didn't like find a pet was in season two or three? Yeah, yeah. As, as was Hurricane Fluttershy. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this uh, is... may the best, may the best pet win was episode 7 of season 2. Hurricane Flattershy was episode 22 of season 2. Yeah, but this is way in season 5. Like Rainbow says in this episode, it's the first winter she and Tank have ever shared. So while we've had five seasons, we've had, I would say at most a year and a half of actual world time. Oh wow. Oh god, my head hurts. Ouch. Well, it's not so difficult to follow. This is not a Christopher Nolan film, guys. Yeah, unless oh, no. we see it happen in the show, it hasn't happened yet. Oh, wow. If you really think about it, right? If you really, really, really think about it, that means that from getting tank to getting Tarek blasting off everything, it's been a year. Yeah, that's my point. Twilight's uh, meltdowns actually seem very conservative, <laughs> give, given what Celestia has put her through in one year. Ah, all right. I mean, it's just like, man, how much... No wonder these ponies are taking a break every available chance. It's like they've got, like, five near-death experiences lined up for the week. Oh, my. Suddenly, you see all those picnics on a completely different light. It's the only moment of breathing they have. <laughs> this, yeah. this, may, this may be the last time we all live to see tomorrow. <laughs> to Ponyville, every picnic is like that party at the beginning of Das Boot. <laughs> where everybody's celebrating and happy, thinking they are going to get killed by the Germans. So it's exactly the same thing. Uh, so, but... so, so anyway, Rainbow is going corporate sabotage on us. <laughs> yep, yep. And undoing Fluttershy's work, so Fluttershy fanboy does not approve. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I was about to say, careful still, where your Fluttershy fanboy is showing. Hmm. Oh, is it obvious? Does it make, does it intrigue you? <laughs> it's uh no, I want to I want to see more. <laughs> well, oh my god! I sh uh, yeah. But uh, I guess going into this scene where where Rainbow is intentionally sabotaging the weather, it goes back to people who want to talk about the grieving allegory in this piece, 
and the people who just want to enjoy the absurdity of it. Now, Rainbow's going, uh, in both cases, Rainbow's dialed everything up to 11. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know of any people who've gone through the grieving process and made that phase. <laughs> or that phase. Or any other phase like that. But here she is about to destroy machinery and incidentally put Tank's life at risk as well. But it, Rainbow is more likable if you realize she's trying to do this to save a life rather than uh, just, oh, I don't want to be inconvenienced for three months. True that, true that. I, I think it's a bit selfish on Rainbow's part here, but it's the point of view of how you look at this episode because if you look at it as um, Rainbow Dash being selfish for not uh, being, like well, you just said, uh, being inconvenienced for three months not having Tank around, yes, that is selfish. But if you take a look, see at the part where it's for Tank to survive during the winter so that both of them could be together, then it will be another way of looking at things. Although, although it's funny, on Equestria Daily's forums, uh, I remember w- one member, one commentator was saying, oh, Rainbow was putting Tank's life at risk by not letting him hibernate. She's going to kill him. And how how could she? She's so horrible. And I thought, you know, one, this episode is semi-educational because I did not know uh, that tortoises hibernated as well. But do they? Really? They do. I went to... Oh. Uh, there's actually a tortoise uh, care website that talks about using a sun lamp to uh, ease them in and out of hibernation. Oh, okay. So that I guess that's the hidden joke in this uh, in this episode. Rainbow could have solved all her problems with a sun lamp. Ah, true. <laughs> but the bigger thing is, how seriously do you want to take this? Are they? They're asking you to believe that if he falls into a propeller, he'll die, and Rainbow mm-hmm. reacts with pop- proper fear. But the idea that while Rainbow's spinning him around and in that song and playing, his life is at risk, that's getting pretty dark territory for a kid's show. Yeah. There's a play there's a time and a place and that was not it. Yeah, you can like you can uh, start talking about one thing and analyzing it. Um far enough that you end up going into the green dark, but then again that's I think that is the adult mind speaking over there. To go back to the what you guys were talking about, um about how Rainbow Dash was basically destroying machinery, uh, mm. just to p- put up with that. Um, not only was she, f- I want to see it as, uh, she being fueled by, uh, she wanting to, uh, uh, quote unquote, save Tank's life, but I like to see that as people usually make a big mess of things when they are dealing with, uh, grief. And I- I'm pretty sure that anybody who has gone through grief, they don't have the clearest of minds, and they are not having the the, the 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 clearest of thoughts. So when you do something and you you have all the potential to screw it up, but even more so when you are when you have when you have baggage on you, like when you are depressed or when you are sad about something because something terrible happened in your life, you are bound to make mistakes uh, more more frequently. So. I see this whole scene as Rainbow Dash trying to stop something and trying to stop it, she only causes it to happen even faster. Like, it's the futility of uh, of Me trying too. to stop the... Fu- mm. Yeah, the futility of, of trying to stop the future from happening. Like, you know it's going to happen, but when trying to happen it, you actually make it happen. Because that's what happens next, is that when Rainbow Dash breaks the machine, she creates a, a whole mess in the factory... So much so that she causes an explosion that throws Twilight Sparkle into quoting Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare yourself, every pony. Winter's coming. <laughs> Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage. Uh, that's, that was the other moment where I actually had to confront some of my friends because they were like, oh, winter is coming. They made a meme reference. That is such a stupid meme. meme. They have to make a meme. And I'm like, you guys know that Game of Thrones is a TV show and before that it was a book, right? They are making a reference to the book. Besides, this actually is a pretty clever joke because it's both a callback to Game of Thrones. And it makes sense within the context because winter has been coming the entire episode. But this one is coming even faster and harder. <laughs> ah, and that's 
That's what happens next. They throw a snowball so big it causes a nuclear explosion that creates nuclear winter. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. To quote Norman, we it comes so hard and spreads white stuff everywhere. <laughs> uh, I didn't even notice it. <sighs> so yes. there you go. There you go. There's your Freudian imagery for a children's cartoon. My work here is done. Freudian imagery, imagery, imagery or a perfect metaphor about the brony fandom. <laughs> I know. Oh, spewing white all over these cute pastel color horses. Nope. <laughs> Actually, if you freeze frame, you check the, the image on the, on the MLP wiki, uh, of Rainbow Dash and Tank inside that snowball. Tank looks so worried. He's panicking. I mean, that is a face of fear right there. <laughs> oh, you just oh been, yeah. You've just been in the middle of explosion. I cannot fault him. Poor guy. I want to give him a hug. Mm. Uh, but yeah, the explosion happens. Snow everywhere. It's snowing. We're in May for Pete's sake. Uh, but it is, it, 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 it has happened in the end. Winter is come. Winter has come. And, I I actually like this part of the episode uh, as well because Rainbow Dash gets away with it, <laughs> and I am very happy that Rainbow Dash does get away with it because I mean it was going to happen sooner or later, and they didn't know that she was the one destroying the facility. So her friends knew. Well, I'm pretty sure that her friends kind of knew that she was behind it, but I like the fact that they don't meddle with this because this is not the focus of the episode. Mm-hmm. Really, I'm a, I'm of the opposite mind. Rainbow committed a. <laughs> Basically a federal crime. If they had had a scene at the end where she has to rebuild the weather machine. Well, knowing Celestia and probably the weather team, they wanted the new setup and Celestia said she'd deal with it. All I'm saying is you break the law, there should be some consequences. Otherwise, what are you saying to kids? (laughs) That if you are a good athlete and uh, you have friends in high places, you can actually get away with corporate espionage. Which, hey, kids, that is completely true. Now, isn't it? Ay, ay, ay. Yes, I, it I, is. Want, I want morality, not reality. <laughs> uh, next scene, next scene. Funny, funny, though, the fact that the people in this fandom, they want reality in their kids' cartoon, and when they are giving it, no, we want this to be, <laughs> to be right. Uh-huh. Oh my god. However, I do imagine Rainbow Dash going to court and, and saying, how do you plead? And Rainbow going, uh, I saved your life like four times. Element of loyalty. My, I'm friends with three princesses. Three. Uh, four. I don't know who, no, I don't know who this cadence is that you're talking about. <laughs> someone like that. And, <laughs> so, I'm sorry, but I plead myself innocent. <laughs> and I'm gonna get away with it. And she will. Uh, you know, actually, I, I have my own theory on how to avert that little scene. Oh, you remember you, you remember putting your hoof down the the te- the valley girl ponies? Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh. Maybe oh, on her. Yes, 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 that was one of them, wasn't she? So, all you got to do and we may see this in a certain review by a guy who <laughs> may, or may, not, may or may not be mentally healthy, uh just give him a good conk on the head, shave off the mane, slap one of those Rainbow Dash fan club uh Wigs and maybe some cardboard wings, and ha- and hand her over as Rainbow Dash's evil twin. <laughs> and call Wobniar. And the moral of the story, children, is don't be me to Fluttershy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or else you get a life sentence into a correctional. Uh, but uh, here comes the actual um uh the one part of the episode that I. I am the most conflicted about mm, okay. uh, the 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 part dealing with depression, and it's a uh, uh, Rainbow Dash is in her house. She doesn't want to talk. She's she's in bed hugging Tank. She doesn't want to let him go. Not only are the main five kind of uh, uh, put off by this, but they are like we have to deal with this one way or another. And I actually love the fact that it's Fluttershy the one who takes the step forward and and confronts her. And I really like the way that she does that. She's like, don't even stutter. Rainbow Dash, your winter is going to be petless. <laughs> but she says, she says it's a lot more uh, softer than that. But 
I like the fact that they actually deal with this head on because that's pretty much how you have to deal with someone as Rainbow Dash. <laughs> He's going through something like this. I mean, different strokes for different for different folks. I know that, but I think that she will be able to put up with this kind of treatment. Like mm, she's true. she's tough enough that she will not um, she will not feel worse after being treated like this. And plus, Fluttershy is taking that breezy's lesson to heart. I, I just love um, Rarity's line. Whatever did you do that for? Because she'll never get past this until she lets it all out. And <laughs> true enough, I actually had to put up with something like that before. Mm-hmm. And it's not until you, it, I know it's going to sound pathetic, but it's not until, uh, I kind of like cried myself to sleep that I was able to think with a clear mind. Sometimes you have to get it all out so you can feel better about it and you can have, uh, rational thoughts again. True that. And I just love how Twilight pushes Applejack with magic in the front and saying, you're the element of honesty. <laughs> Say something honest. There, there. <laughs> there, there. It's all right. And, and then everybody needs a good cry. Yeah. <laughs> but not because they're sorry for Rainbow Dash. They're, they're sorry for Fluttershy. What? <laughs> I can't bear to see Fluttershy cry. <laughs> oh, they're okay with Rainbow Dash crying, but Fluttershy? Oh, no. That's too much. <laughs> So this is this is perhaps the part that has me going. Okay, should I feel bad in this scene? Should I feel sad or should I laugh? Because how can something be so over the top dramatic and at the same time so hilarious? Hmm. Because I mean, the the, the four of them are there crying in bed. Well, ah, it's a big pile of tears, and I'm here like kind of snorting. Like I'm pretty yeah. sure you're going to call me heartless or like soulless. No, no, but no, it, no. It's it, it 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 is it is kind of a weird mix. And <laughs> Twilight turns to Applejack. You too, Applejack. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> and then you, but then it turns out she's not. She cries on the inside. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> I'm mostly sad because you're not sad. What? <laughs> Me? What about Applejack? Applejack, Applejack cries on the inside twilight. It's true. <laughs> um, she's, a, she's a tough, she's a tough man. I love yeah. her. I, God damn it. If this season doesn't have a rarity episode soon, <laughs> I am going to knock her out of the first spot in my, in my heart because Applejack is just getting better and better with each episode. Since this season has been giving us way more Applejack moments than season two. And it's not even started. <laughs> well, season two was where she was known as the background pony. Oh yeah. yeah. It, it makes me, it makes me so happy because I am, um, I, 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 I hate to say this, I like Applejack from the very beginning. Like, the first time that we saw Applejack in the show, it was when I went, okay, she's awesome. Mm. But then they didn't do anything with her for, like, four seasons. Mm. Until season three, kind of, where she started to do, uh, she started to be a, a, a more, uh, to be a, a little bit more active. But this season is just full of gems with her. It's like the, shoot, I cannot do countryisms no more. Mm. <laughs> oh, these quills, no, they're not being touched, they're just old. The, hmm. the lullaby to her sister, and then this scene, and whatever we are going to talk in the next episode review. So it's like, mm-hmm. God damn it, farm horses! Stop being so cool. Uh, we're talking about cool things. Like, uh, anybody notice that Rainbow Dash sleeps with a uh, robe on? Slippers and robe, yeah. Yeah, and also, and Tank has a really cool robe and Rainbow Dash slipper. That's so cool. <laughs> they have matching slippers. <laughs> <laughs> really. Yeah, because the Rainbow Dash has uh, turtle slippers, ah. and, and Tank has Rainbow Dash slippers. This which, by the way, they are on sale. You can actually get Rainbow Dash slippers now. Yay! <laughs> yeah. So, uh. so Spike has a Rarity doll, Sweetie Belle has a Spike doll, Rainbow and Tank have slippers of one another, <laughs> and Twilight's probably got a Flash Sentry plushie. Somewhere <laughs> around there. Oh, sure oh, Oh no, the fans, they're going after you, Silver. Run away! I run from nothing, which is probably why I get blown up a lot in my show. <laughs> ah, you don't run from nothing, you fly. Even if, <laughs> even if you don't have to use your wings half of the time. Run away! Run away! <laughs> but, yeah, once, once Dash finally lets it all out, and, um, and Pinkie Pie and Rarity and Fluttershy in the process, everybody lets it all out, uh, Dash is, uh, ready to 
take the last step and finally put up with the fact that she's going to have to say goodbye to Tank. And, yeah, okay, this scene is pretty touching. It's it's pretty heart-wrenching. And mm-hmm. it's just that little gesture of Tank putting his little leg on Rainbow Dash's hoof. That is so sweet. And that is so neat. It's like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, this is little touches like that that make me admire this show for how subtle it can get to be. Uh, mm-hmm. At the same time, has been so incredibly over the top. With that, they move to the scene where, uh, well, the winter has been celebrated already. They are throwing snowballs at uh, each other. They're making snow angels. And Rainbow Dash takes a tank to um, uh, to bury him ne- next to a tree. <laughs> so what okay. screen? Guys who didn't get the whole analogy here and the whole metaphor, did you need... Any more clues? Rainbow Dash literally buries her pet. Yeah, no. <laughs> Your argument is completely invalid. You guys just don't want to um, don't want to put up with the fact that this episode is about that. I think it's a very nifty scene, even though Tank does almost all of the job and he buries himself in the in the dirt. Well, that's that's just uh, polite on his part. You know, how often can you offer that service to a friend? Oh, uh, yeah. Don't mind me, I'll just bury myself. <laughs> I'll just expire over here. No, he's just hibernating. See you, see you during the haunting. <laughs> and if you needed more uh, more cute imagery, if possible, <laughs> like, like Rainbow Dash isn't cute enough wearing the, the, the her scarf and her hat and her little hoof warmers. Look at those. Warmers, oh my god. She takes a book out and she reads Tank at their Hindu story before finally uh, leaving him be. And I think from the what I'm seeing here on the cover, I think it's one of the three books that appears on the that are on the uh, uh, on the special book set that was uh, was sold, the one that Jim Barrow wrote. Oh, I wish I can see it right now. <laughs> it looks I looks it looks a lot like it. So is this like Rainbow Dash and the Deus Ex Refrigerator? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was written by Pixel Kitties, you see. <laughs> oh. I remember that print. And with that, the episode ends. And that was Thanks for the Memories. So, okay, guys, final thoughts. What will you, uh, what, where will you rate this episode? And what will you have to say about it that we haven't, um, we haven't mentioned yet? Hmm. Hard to say what we haven't mentioned yet. We've got to run a gamut. I will say that it's probably my favorite of season five thus far. Which, granted, we're only at episode five. That's not saying a whole lot. Uh, give it time. Let's see how it stacks up. But it had this wonderful blend of seriousness and humor. And it offered a way... There are very few shows that will show the consequences of death. And this one was doubly clever for showing that without actually having a real death. Basically, I'm thinking back to movies like Up and Big Hero 6, where the grieving process was part of the story. That doesn't happen a lot. And to draw another Avengers analogy, you know, everyone's so sad in the first movie because of a death. But really, it's just motivation to beat up the bad guy. You know, now it's personal. There's no grieving process involved. Here there is, and it, it just feels more interesting because of it. And as for my point of view, the animation here, the background, even though Twilight Castle is still purple, um, <laughs> and Rainbow Dash's expressions, the jokes, the writing, it's all good. I mean, they are learning from what they have done and adding in a bit of risk here and there because... Okay, let's just say people hate the meme faces. They hate the memes in this one. And you know what? I can see their point of view because this is My Little Pony. My Little Pony is meant to make memes, not to copy memes. So I can see that point of view. But I do love the subtle reference of Winters is Coming or even that face because that face is going to be a meme on its own. So I don't mind it. They have every right to do whatever they want to do and... We get to see more of Rainbow Dash's house. So, yay. Uh, personally, uh, every episode that is signed by Cindy Morrow 
always carries uh, some sort of uh, division within the fandom, with a few exceptions. Um, like, she's the one that wrote a winter wrap-up. There is no one better to talk about an episode involving setting up winter than, uh, than Cindy Morrow. But more important is that she, uh, she is also an expert on dealing with subjects at a very personal level. Like with, um, with Sisterhood Social or a Family Appreciation Day. So all of her episodes always hit somewhat of a personal note. And this episode was, was something that really hit close to home with me. Um, especially this year from what I talk about the beginning of the, of the review. Uh, it is very difficult to put up with, um, with someone dying, with a pet dying, with a, with a loved one, uh, dying. And the fact that I was able to watch this episode, enjoy it, and in the process not feel insulted, was remarkable because they portrayed the five steps of grief really, really well. And they didn't shove it in your face. It was so subtle that it was only after, uh, after watching the episode a second time, I, I realized, hang on a minute, these are the five stages of grief, one after the other. There are so many other TV shows that shove that concept into your face. Uh, the one that I'm thinking of right now is uh, House MD, actually, which has an entire episode dedicated to that, and it was awful. The fact that this cartoon show managed to pull it off so subtly speaks volumes of how how much better this TV show has gotten from season one. Well, I just find it funny that you say that... I, I, I say, from my perspective, the, the TV shows and movies don't want to talk about the grieving process. And... From your perspective, it sounds like they talk about it too much. Yeah, they, they will, whenever, well, I, I, I didn't mean to say that they talk about it too much, but when they talk about it, they don't know how to talk about it. Um, the, you, you did mention Up and Big Hero 6 in, um, in your final thoughts, and I absolutely agree. Big Hero 6 perhaps, uh, uh took the whole grieving progress, uh, process as, uh, something real, something that is to be dealt with, uh, and, tackling it with real solutions, like uh, having interaction with your friends or having interaction with someone else, uh, uh, get, get in contact, uh, get in direct contact. Like, you know, it's, like, like, it's something that you cannot uh, hand wave. It's something that has to be dealt with directly. And this episode, I think, knew how to do it without shoving it in your face. Um, so, yeah. I, uh, that's what I meant to say. I don't mean to say that they talk about it a lot. I just mean to say that when they do, they don't know what to do with it. Hmm. Uh, and I am, I'm so glad that they knew what to do with it. So, uh, uh, kudos to, I, I know that everyone who worked in this episode, from animators to voice actors, they all did an excellent job, but with a faulty story, uh, it doesn't matter how much effort you put into it. Thankfully, Emma Larson and Cindy Morrow were in top form. And this was actually one of the wishes that I had for this season. I didn't share this with anyone, but I wanted to see an episode where Emma Larson and Cindy Morrow work together. Mm-hmm. Because they were my favorite writers for season two. And I was like, I want to see these guys combine their talents and make an episode. And we mm-hmm. got this one. And it was great. Yeah, this episode made me see what I needed to see. <laughs> Funny, coming from a kid's show. Well, people underestimate the kid's show aspect they say oh if it's a kid show it must not be good when when did that become a norm tell that to jim henson see how far you get <laughs> so i think true. We, we are getting to a point where we will not be able to use the whole oh it's so much good it's so good for a kid show as a um, point of argument anymore mm-hmm. in fact I, you know what from now on i am going to stop using it because mlp is not a show for kids it's a show for everyone. Well, honestly speaking, it is a show for kids. Like, the money's there. It's well, for the kids. The adults just like it. For the children. <laughs> you but know, when, for kids. <laughs> but when we talk about uh, Appaloosa's Most Wanted, that, that'll that be an episode where we're silly. Like, yeah, this one, yeah, they treat it too much like a, a kid's show. Kid show. But that's for... Another week. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that one another day. And funny enough, it's not going to be the next review because the next review we're going to talk about a comic. If you notice, we are having swapping back and forth. So 
One time is an episode, next time is a comic, and next time we're going to be talking about a certain comic that a certain hippogriff really likes from a certain sub-series of a certain comic series. Um, that is uh, Friends, My Little Pony Friends Forever, issue number 13, starring Rarity and Bob Seed. Uh, written West. by Jeremy Whitley and with art by Agnes Garbowska and colors by Lauren Perry. Really scheduled for the reviews are usually on Thursday and Fridays. So yeah, I'm doubling up the review time. So have fun, guys. There's a lot of stuff you need to catch up with. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the review. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see you on the next MBS show review. Have a good one, everybody. See you guys later. Bye. Adios. Well, at least you didn't bring your fanboys this time. That's good.